Well, I'm very interested now in lay communities, you see. I find so many have this call to contemplation, actually, though they may not use that word, but their spiritual life, and don't feel called to the traditional monastic or religious life, and nor to simple married life. They want to find a way to dedicate their lives as lay people working in the world to contemplation, experience of God, the final fulfillment, you see. So what I have in mind is what we call oblate communities. You see, many ministries have oblate people living in the world, lay people, though they can be priests, who have a bond, a spiritual bond with the monastery, but no juridical bond at all. They are a free community. So I want to see free lay communities coming up with a bond with a monastery or with the monastic tradition so that they get a guidance, but have the freedom to develop in their own way. And of course, at this stage, we, we can only live a contemporary today if we integrate aspects of Hindu and Buddhist and Sufi mysticism into our Christian life. So I see them as centers for Christian life open to the world as a whole and to different religious traditions, so I would see it. I would not be keen, you know, on a sort of center <coughs> which would organize on a large scale. I am always averse to large-scale organizations. You start in a small group, and you develop an authentic, contemplative Christian life, and then you form a network more. Little groups hive off from it, and then the idea spreads. But always, rather like monasteries, you know, the Benedictine monasteries, they never formed a congregation or an order before. Each monastery was separate, independent, but they spread all over Europe like that, each having its own authentic character, but sharing the same way of life and spreading this way of contemplative life throughout Europe. So my model always remains that, really. Small groups, small communities spreading out in a network, rather.